Hi all, Dr. Mike Slater here, and I am briefly going to cover conceptually multiple regression and partial correlation. So there are situations when we're trying to predict an outcome when we actually want to be able to predict that outcome with multiple variables. Okay, think of a selection decision. Think of getting into college. They don't just look at your SAT scores, rather they'll look at your SAT scores, GPA score, maybe a score based on an entrance essay. Uh, that you wrote when applying to that school. Okay, and what we, what we can do there is conduct something called multiple regression. That's when we have two or more variables uh, predicting Y, a single outcome. Okay, in our case, our X variables, uh, the things that we're trying to use to predict Y, might be high school GPA and SAT, and our Y value, our outcome we're interested in, is college GPA. So we can create an equation based on multiple outcomes, okay? And that, that equation would look something like this one down here. We have y hat equals b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2 plus a, okay? Once again, b is going to be our slope and a is going to be our intercept. So all we do when we're calculating multiple regression is calculate multiple slopes, okay? We calculate b for x, b for, uh, b for x1, b for x2, and we still calculate our intercept, and we can calculate a line that takes into account multiple predictor variables. Here's an example right here. Let's say that we're trying to predict academic performance, this circle right here. Well, let's say that we have just SAT scores, okay? Just SAT scores would predict roughly 30% of the variance in academic performance, okay? This overlap right here is the amount of variance that is shared between academic performance and SATs. So this would be predicted by SATs. Now let's say that we we're trying to predict academic performance and we just had IQ, okay? If we have IQ, then we would be able to predict a total of 40% of academic performance. This whole area here, that's where the two variables overlap. Now, if we were to create a multiple regression equation line that took into account both IQ and SAT, we could predict a total of 50% of the variance, okay? You'll see here that some of the variance overlaps and multiple regression will take that into, an account, uh, into account if IQ and SAT predict redundant variance in academic performance. So it assesses redundant, uh, redundant variance, it assesses unique variance contributed by IQ and unique variance contributed by SAT. And based on that, we can increase the power of prediction. We can increase how much academic performance we can actually predict by just taking into account more variables. Next, I want to talk very briefly about partial correlation. Partial correlation is incredibly useful. It's when you can measure the relationship between two variables while eliminating the influence of a third variable. We call this a partial correlation, but it's actually regression. Okay, we're going to be estimating variances and so on. Now we talked about spurious correlations before. You might be aware of spurious correlations when you have a relationship between X and Y that is actually due to Z. Okay, like if we were to see a, a positive relationship between number of cows per square mile and uh, number of crimes committed, well, there is a spurious correlation there. That's, that's because there's a, a Z variable. Population density is, is much smaller in places with more cows, and that's really what's explaining the relationship. So what we can do is we can statistically control for Z, statistically control for the variable that might be driving this relationship to determine whether or not the XY relationship still exists. So let's say that there is a correlation found between weight and mathematical ability for elementary school students. Okay, realistically there's probably not a real relationship between weight and mathematics skill, otherwise we would just start feeding our kids McDonald's and hoping that their math skills increase. Of course that's probably a, a false correlation because both X and Y, both weight and mathematical skill, are related to Z, age, okay? Older children tend to weigh more, and older children have spent more than years in school, so they have higher mathematical skills. So really, age is probably driving this relationship. 
So again, this is probably a spurious correlation. Weight and mathematical skill are showing a positive correlation in these children, but really age is what's driving that relationship. And so we can use partial correlation to fix the relationship. So we can determine the true relationship between weight and mathematical skill, okay? We can partial out the variance accounted for by age to see if weight and math skill still show a positive correlation. What we end up doing is we hold the variation in math skill constant due to age, okay? We eliminate this variation and then without age left in the equation, without math skill due to age in the equation, we try to see whether or not weight still has those effects. Right here you can see we have a data set where we can say that x is weight, okay, x is weight, y is math skill, and z is age, okay. If you're not taking into account age, there seems to be a pretty strong positive trend as uh, weight goes up, math skills tend to increase as well. But when we take into account age, okay, in this age group there's essentially a null relationship. In this age group, there's a null relationship. In this age group, there's a null relationship. So what we end up doing is taking into account these different age groups, eliminating the variance in Y related to those age groups, and seeing if there's still a relationship between X and Y. I ran that data real quick, and you can see that there's a huge relationship between weight and math, a correlation of 0.94, okay? But there's also a huge relationship between weight and age, 0.97. As people get older, they tend to, well, children especially, they tend to increase in age. Now, you don't have to uh, understand exactly what this is telling us right here, but this is a regression equation right here uh, run through SPSS. Here, what we're doing is we're partialing age out of the equation, okay? So we enter age in at step one, and we see whether or not the relationship between weight and math still exists after controlling for age. Okay, here it's, it looks like there is absolutely no relationship between weight and age. Okay, the beta tells us the slope. There is a zero slope between weight and mathematical ability because we're accounting for age. And that wraps up a brief conceptual discussion of partial correlations. Uh, everybody have a wonderful night.